I think pension funds have a critical role to play in the economic growth of any society. Um, often looking very uh, in the beginning at what they're doing locally, but also globally. I think investment funds, whether they're in New York or Sydney or Beijing or Amsterdam, have a vested interest in how the investment opportunities develop here in Africa. But perhaps more to the point of your summit is what are pension funds in Nairobi or Louis or Durban or Vintuk or Accra, what are pension funds based in those cities doing about investing in Africa? Looking at the transactions in Africa and the investment transactions are what role, if any, environmental, social and governance, so-called ESG factors can play. Well, the first framing I would put to a long-term investor, like a pension fund investor, infrastructure investor, someone in a private equity fund, is it's impossible in the 21st century to invest in Africa today and not consider environment, social and governance factors. So just turning around that whole mindset that says, well, we can do it anyway, can't we? In my experience, that's not possible. Uh, and if you will, as an advocate or activist for uh, ESG in every investment decision, my view is that in Africa, there's always someone watching. There's always going to be implications. And we live in a Facebook and Twitter enabled world. Uh, I put it to you that there will be, if you create or, or uh, fail to abide by laws, uh, say in the environmental realm, that there is someone who will take a photograph on their uh, Blackberry or iPhone or Samsung and, and they will send it around the world. That can happen immediately and, and very quickly. We know that will happen. And perhaps Africa with its huge cell phone penetration is uh, one of those contents where it can happen faster. So the first framing is to, to have long-term investors understand that whatever the investment transaction, their environmental, social, and governance factors in that, in that decision. Secondly, I'd, I'd have investors think through, it's not just the risks, but they're also opportunities. We've known for a long, long time about the risks related to ESG issues, about pollution or poor governance or offending your customers or hurting local communities, perhaps where you have a mine or you have a logistics program. Uh, it's obvious what those risks could be. Perhaps more exciting and, and uh, the opportunity that we look to open up in Africa is by including ESG factors in your investment decisions implies you can monitor the mandates and the policies at the company level, which means the positive uh, performance on ESG factors means that company has more markets to export to. There's some markets, frankly, in the world, the major developed markets, you can't access until you've got certain uh, certifications or you've provided uh, quality of products or standards or verified your supply chain, for example. So there's great opportunities for companies doing business uh, exporting out of Africa, but maybe even increasingly inside Africa where the standards are increasing. There's great op opportunities. And a third way of, of answering the question of where the ESG uh, issues show up in transactions, for me, for the pension fund investor needs to start at the very beginning with setting the, the strategy and the policy. And in the 21st century, an investor needs to be aware of all the factors that are going to have an impact on the investment decisions. We have research out of the developed markets tracking performance over five years, where 130 basis points outperformance through June 2012 was created by optimizing ESG factors. Perhaps more exciting, there was even an 8% improvement in ESG performance. So for me, it's not just can you find the same investment performance or better, the question is, what positive ESG impact or development impact are pension funds having in, in Africa, transaction by transaction? And finally, the, if you think about the limited opportunities in Africa or the difficulty of developing your investment pipeline, I would argue that including ESG factors at the policy level helps you integrate those into your pipeline, which means the investment opportunities that come to you, as well as the quality of filtering you do of those investment opportunities, is going to be improved because you're taking a holistic approach to reviewing those investments. And when you make those investments in Africa, you're mindful, you're proactive, and you're explicitly seeking to provide investment performance that helps the members and beneficiaries of your pension fund, but also leaves Africa better off because you've maximized the environmental social governance factors. 
because of long-term investment by pension funds. We will have better products, we'll have better due diligence of investment opportunities, and we should have a more transparent stakeholder engagement between investor, company, and the broader community in Africa that helps make for investment opportunities in Africa that leave us better off in the 21st century, perhaps than the end of the 20th. When funds in Africa don't take ESG factors into account in their policy or in their portfolio construction or in their investment approach, they're just creating more risks than they need to. And in fact, they're missing some of the opportunities that are available. The very first thing any pension fund or any long-term investor, any investment professional in Africa needs to think through is, how could you possibly invest in Africa in the 21st century and exclude environmental, social, and governance factors. Now, ESG factors are not all the same, and they vary from investment opportunity to investment opportunity and country to country. But there's always ESG factors in every investment decision. What goes wrong is when an investor proactively doesn't think through, well, what can some of the implications be? Let me give you some examples. The Navigating Muddy Waters series that the Government Employees Pension Fund in South Africa did with the WWF, Cinco uh, did some work for that Carbon Trust, um, did some work where we looked at well, what is the price for CO2 emissions today that investment managers are including in their investment decisions. Now what is truly shocking in the 21st century and 2013 is to know that the investment professionals managing long-term assets for widows and orphans and they don't have a view on what the CO2 price would be in South Africa in the context of coming government legislation on the ability to emit CO2 and what price that they'll need to consider for that. Let me give you another example. Water. Well, firstly, if you try to do any business in Africa, whether it's food and beverage, whether it's mining, without water, you've got another thing coming. The first thing you need as a mine is a water license, uh, le less about the geological deposit. Another study by Standard Bank Equity Analysts looked at 14 mining companies in South Africa, all the, the majors, uh, and these are dual listed in Johannesburg and London, Toronto and Sydney. And what they found is these major mining companies were not even clear about how much water they were using at a site level or at an aggregated company level. So as a long-term investor, in Africa, where you know many African countries are arid or semi-arid, they're probably going to face water issues going forward. You had major mining companies that were not running water policies or had a very good handle on what their water policies are. Finally, let's talk about community relations. And here, I'm not going to touch on the quality of products or, or where consumers actually bought the product. I want to talk rather about the community relations. Now, as an African investor, you know the first thing is relationships. In Africa, business is firstly about relationships and secondly about the professional transaction. You can't do business in Africa until people know you and they trust you. When it comes to community relations and if you're investing in a particular company and that company has sites or locations, whether it's logistics, telecommunications, mining, extractors, food and beverage, well, you're investing into a community. And the question is less about or there's a mining town, or what happens about the town that grows up around the mile. We want to flip some of that thinking around ESG factors. And the thinking has to be, well, there's a, there's a group of people, there's a community of Africans. How is that company, and how is the supply chain, and, and the stakeholders of that company, including the investors, how are they improving the quality of life for those Africans? What products are being made available? What job skill or education opportunities are being made available? How does that major company and its sites integrate into the local community? We have some very uh, uh, good performance studies. They're very small sample sets, a very short time period. We'll have more of those examples. But I think both on the risks and opportunity side, ESG factors on in every investment decision in Africa. We have some real examples of where companies have avoided getting their fingers burnt or have opened up new opportunities by looking at the ESG issues in transactions in Africa.
Some of the best information we have around ESG factors improving long-term investment return come from more developed markets. Now, let me put an asterisk. We know, for example, that Eugene Farmer, one of three 2013 Nobel laureates in economics, he wants to see 35 years of data before he makes any considered uh, decision on investment trends and performance impacts. We know for much shorter studies, 10-year studies, four-year studies recently by MSCI, uh, looking at the US market and Europe, we've, there was about 130 basis points of outperformance by using an ESG-optimized portfolio. Perhaps more exciting was also the ability to track ESG performance. And we had situations where you had an 8% increase in performance in ESG characteristics of a particular portfolio of companies. So we have real data in 2014 we can look at, not as much of it in Africa as we'd like, and we'd like to encourage more evidence-based research here in Africa looking at uh, ESG factors impacting on listed and unlisted investment performance. But we have more data that indicates either performance that's similar or potentially better than performance without looking directly at ESG factors. And that's simply because you'll be making better investment decisions because you'll have to do better due diligence. You'll take a more holistic view of the management quality and the business quality of the portfolio company that you're investing in. And I'd argue in an era where we have to think of all stakeholders, you have a more sophisticated approach to understanding, well, what is the value of healthy stakeholder relationships? where you, you do your business, how you do your business, and what are the implications to your supply chain and your distribution base of healthy relationships in Africa today.